students roughly. Once we, um, next year, I'm sure you're aware, we get some um, year sevens as well as year eights next year. Uh, we'll be over a thousand students, um, which is getting a relatively large school. Uh, I'm sure you've also noticed tonight that we're in the middle of a main building program, um, which will be finished by the end of this year. So uh, if your summer daughter comes to next year, when you come at the start of the year, we'll notice some big changes. We may have temporary fences and um, all those sorts of things have been lots of nice new buildings and redeveloped spaces, which we're very excited about. But we will have, certainly have room full of those students. But one of the things we've always prided ourselves on, regardless of the size of the school, is we want to make sure that if you're one of a thousand or one of 500 or one of 1,200, as a student, you still feel like you're part of something and you're known, you're not anonymous. So we, we do a range of things to make sure that the students feel um, part of the school and feel that they're known by their teachers and they have lots of different opportunities to engage in a whole range of things. And next year's going to be a really important year because um, we've got, as I said, year sevens coming for the first time, but we'll, we've also got our last group of year eights coming for the first time. So that's two um, brand new groups of students we have to make sure 
feel very much a part of the school and we're doing a lot of work to make sure that that's a really positive experience for them when they join us next year. I mentioned before uh, that we want to develop students who have a whole range of qualities as well as, uh, as having the possession of the knowledge that they need to do various things. Uh, and that's summed up by our culture of achievement, which basically says we want to make sure that the students aim high. They're not happy to just you know, be coasting along and, and being mediocre. We want them to aim to do their best, to find what they're interested in, what they're passionate about, and, and really go for it. Um, but having said that, we realise that, that looks very different um, for a whole range of students. It won't always be the same thing, so we need to make sure that we're supporting students uh, to, to reach that level of achievement, regardless of whatever that happens to be. And we want them to basically develop as people as well. So they become independent learners, take charge of their own learning, critical and creative thinking, act with care and respect, positive values, and to aim high, as I said. Uh, and that means we have very strong processes of managing any misbehaviour and harassment is simply not something that we tolerate in, in school. So there's lots of innovative things happening, but underlying that is really strong organisation, strong management, and a whole range of things in place to make sure that if we get those fundamentals right, it allows us to do some of the more innovative things that we're really, really excited about. Um, to highlight what some of those are, and this may be um, going over some of the things you've seen down the other end, but let me just um, show uh, this video, which is from uh, some work that we are doing as uh, one of the three Metropolitan Entrepreneurial Specialist Schools. So we've, we've had that designation for a number of years now. There's only three in Metropolitan Adelaide and two in country areas, and that allows us to, do, um, to focus on some things that we wouldn't normally have uh, the ability to do. Uh, and it, um, it's about a way of thinking about developing those skills and qualities I was talking about. Uh, not just as some people think of entrepreneurship as being uh, starting your own business. It may be that, but it may be working in a whole range of things but behaving uh, in an entrepreneurial way and having entrepreneurial uh, capabilities. Uh, and I'm just going to use this video to, to highlight a bit of what, what that means for us. When the opportunity to become an entrepreneur a specialist school came up, we looked at what that would involve and the opportunities associated with that, and it really resonated with the sorts of directions that we'd already started to embark on as a school. It is far more than just creating businesses for us at Seaton High School. It's a way of thinking and doing. I have always loved the idea of bringing authentic learning into the classroom, and through entrepreneurial learning, I've been able to do that. I enrolled in a specialist program to try new things and to challenge myself to push my boundaries. I have an interest in the field of business, so I was hoping I could collaborate with professionals and find out what I actually want to do in the field of business. I thought it would be a new opportunity to explore something that I was curious about but not quite sure about for a future career path. What it means to me is focusing our work on developing a student's way of thinking and a way of approaching education and, and a way of improving their capabilities. It means that we can create opportunities for our students that they haven't necessarily been able to engage in before. It means uh, the implementation of innovative practices and ways of thinking that allow students to develop the uh, capabilities and enthusiasm necessary to unlock a world of potential and opportunity. I believe that entrepreneurial mindset is important, especially in today's the day and age where everything is fast and ever-changing, that being able to adapt is one of the most employable skills one can have. It helps us learn and explore new things, but not only that, it also helps us put it in action. It helps you to spot and solve problems related to your learning, as well as just in life and the environment around you in general. Think for our immediate community, it's a great opportunity for them to see what we are doing within our school and that we are changing the way that we are delivering our curriculum to our students. We have over 200 students in 
engaging our entrepreneurial space packages that work with 30 different industry collaborators. Through this experience, students have the opportunity to work with the community and industry experts and entrepreneurs locally and globally. I think I'll use this study in the future because the future is so uncertain that the entrepreneurial skills that I have learnt um, help me give me confidence that through any hurdle I can get through it. This program has helped me develop skills and experiment with processes that I would not have otherwise have access to. I think that engaging with entrepreneurial learning has really helped me to develop a lot of like, soft skills like this confidence and communication and being able to develop this outside of school and professional setting was also really beneficial with developing these skills. We are in the process of rolling out a total of nine senior entrepreneurial packages which cater to a range of future pathways for our students. The pathways will become such that no matter what destination or whatever pathway a student leaves the school with, the learning that they've undertaken at the school in an entrepreneurial sense will be of a huge benefit in whatever that pathway happens to be. traditional subjects and the subjects that are part of the Australian curriculum around those five nodes. So you can see, for example, in uh, global and local perspectives, in the top right hand corner there, uh, that includes English, humanities with a single teacher, and also languages, languages other than English. Physical and natural world, bottom right hand corner there, uh, is maths and science. So they have one teacher for those two subjects and they focus their learning around the physical and natural world. Uh, the other three are the, the arts space, the health and happiness space, and the design domain, or the made world, which includes technology, uh, things like home economics, and those sorts of things. So to give you an example of what that might look like, if I use the arts one as a good example, uh, traditionally what we've done and what many schools do in terms of arts education is that students come to high school and they do a little bit of dance maybe, they might do a little bit of drama, they might do some music, uh, they do some visual arts and gradually they decide which ones of those they like or don't like and decide to continue with them. So rather than dividing the year up into a term's worth of this and a term's worth of that, what we're doing is we're taking groups of students working with groups of teachers to do an authentic um, larger scale task, for example it might be a, a production of some sort, and so within that students have a choice to maybe focus on if their passion or their interest is in the dance space, they can focus on that. If they're more about drama, they can focus on that. If they really like the thought of um, uh, uh, visual arts, they can focus on set design, those sorts of things. So they have choice within the, the project that they're working on, and that also allows it to be focused around a more authentic task rather than just learning bits and pieces of those particular subjects. And that's the same approach we learn in the technology area, the main world, and also in the world and happiness, looking at bigger scale things and how the different subject matter, uh, the subjects fit within that sort of level of organisation. Uh, and that's something that we think would be really good in terms of uh, 
um, just in its own, for their own sake, covering the curriculum in really interesting ways, but also uh, uh, preparing the students for those other opportunities that become available in the senior school. Uh, in the senior school, um, students have access to the full range of a very full range of, of safe subjects, some of which might be in those packages, but many will be normal, uh, what we would call the normal traditional uh, subjects that stand alone as a, uh, a specialist maths or a chemistry or an English and so forth. So we still have those, but sometimes they're packaged up in different ways. Mm -hmm. Talked a bit about the um, development of capabilities and the ways of thinking, the ways we want the students to develop. And you've seen it in that video mentioned a couple of times around the notion of entrepreneurial um, skills. So this, we summarise it in these three ways. We want students to look at finding opportunity, learn by doing things, and make things happen. And then in a very broad sense, the way that we approach the curriculum and the way that we approach the opportunities that they have in their work, if they're working uh, in some of those packages that we've mentioned in the video and also that we'll um, um, talk about in a bit greater detail towards the end of the school. So something that permeates all of our learning is the development of those capabilities. Uh, in that video you heard reference to nine entrepreneurial sales packages. That's those nine, so on a Wednesday, well, today we had over 200 students uh, in years 10 to 12 in vertical groups uh, working in one or other of those. Uh, so they've got a full day for the whole year around a particular focus. Uh, we'll hear a bit more uh, later from um, about food futures and from Forage Supply Company, uh, Justin and Scott, who have just joined us, are going to give us a bit of a, a rundown about the work that they're doing in the school is a really good example. But to give you an idea of what that might look like in one of the other spaces, is um, the program that we've been doing the longest focuses on the use of unmanned uh, aerial vehicles or drones. So in that program, the students spend the whole year, one day a week, working on uh, how drones are constructed, how they operate, what they're used for, what are the limitations about what you can and can't do with them, the legal boundaries around that. And then they come up with a real world application of uh, using drones and they actually go and do it. For example, uh, one year they worked on uh, a weed eradication program on Kangaroo Island where they used drones to uh, map areas of, of, of Kangaroo Island, identify where uh, weed, these weeds were occurring and then as part of their subject, they also developed and, and um, constructed a mechanism that placed on drones that could be used to deposit um, weed, uh, herbicide on those weeds. So, so that, while they were doing these subjects, they were doing a real world application in terms of the use. And, and these students, 10s, 11s and 12s years, by the end of that, uh, had finished a year 12 subject, the stage 2 subject in design, technology and engineering. They've done a year 11 subject in scientific studies and they achieved their remote pilot's license and their radio operator certificate, which are the industry standard qualifications if you want to be a drone pilot. So that's an example of how those packages work. Uh, and they're now in a, a range of um, different uh, spaces, the arts, community involvement, food, uh, and a range of, of, of other things that those nine areas cover and I hope we had a chance to talk about earlier this evening. What that does is gives us the opportunity to partner with a huge range of different outside organisations and there's a, a diagram which uh, shows you the scope of the organisations we work with in those nine different areas. So that's real world businesses, real world social organisations that come in and work alongside our students to help them develop their skills but also to be doing some really worthwhile and realistic stuff. Okay, so again most of that's year at the, um, the senior years but we also have programs that allow students to come into the school at the start of secondary school 
into specialised areas which might lead to some of those opportunities or might lead to more traditional pathways in terms of uh, the, the standard um, subject-based approach. We have um, three programs in the area of entrepreneurial, under our entrepreneurial bank. Um, while I'm talking, I'll just play in the background a bit of video. So the first one I want to talk about is the Emerging Technologies Program. So this is a program that students in primary school can apply for, and if they're accepted into that program, they come in to uh, see high school whether they're zoned for the school or not, and they have the opportunity to focus more in the area of technologies, things like potentially drones, electronics, robotics, 3D printing, all of those sorts of things. So these are students who are really interested in, and passionate about the area of technology, and this allows them to have a uh, spend a bit more time than the other students in that area, and really develop their skills uh, and, and potentially a pathway in that space down the track. Another one is the visual art and innovation specialist program. So this is one that the name just focuses in the art area. So again. Like the technology one, it's for students who have a passion in that particular area, uh, in this case, the arts. And it looks at, um, again, doing some really authentic community-based and uh, arts programs that allows them to pursue their passions and spend a little bit more time in the art space uh, than students in terms of the, who are in the normal pathway. Uh, so again, really exciting for those students to have a passion in that area. We also have a, a diamond sports program, which is baseball and softball. Um, and you may or may, may have had a chance to have a look at the, the baseball facility, the diamond sports facility tonight. You can see tonight, you can see it here, a really uh, state-of-the-art indoor facility for, for training in those two sports. So again, students can apply to be part of these programs, which allows them to spend more time working in, in this case, baseball. Uh, but also, um, more recently, we've been doing baseball for many years, more recently, we've also um, branched out into softball, and we think that's really exciting, and we're starting to get a lot more participation uh, from girls in particular, because uh, softball tends, tends to be a more um, a female oriented sport. But again, all the same facilities, expert coaching, and importantly, it's not just about becoming elite sports people, it's allowing them to do things like developing coaching skills. Uh, today, uh, when the web well was running earlier today, we had uh, all of the surrounding, or well, many of the surrounding primary schools come along, I don't know if it's any of your sons and daughters might have been involved in the Sharp Cup today, there was a softball competition. And so, um, and they were the teams were all coached by the students in these programs. So those programs, along with the SHIP, or Students with High Intellectual Potential, allow students to come to the school, uh, even if they're not zoned to come to the school. So we have a number of places that we allocate the students outside of the zone, uh, and if they're su successful in being accepted into one of those programs, they get automatic enrolment into the school. Um, so that, that's one way of, of students who, who aren't in the zone. We are a zone school. Um, students who are zone can come to the school under that. The language academy I've got up there is slightly different. It's not an entry program. You can't apply for that from primary school, but once you're at the school, students who have a, a, a potentially a real passion for the languages can opt to be part of the language academy and spend more time in, in learning uh, another language, which in our case at the moment is, is Japanese. Outside of the normal curriculum, Lots of, lots of opportunities in sports, um, leadership, student leadership, uh, various clubs. These are growing all the time, the art, visual arts, art, drama. The robotics club, really successful. Um, one of the areas we're spending a lot of time on and it's really growing is creating value for others. One of the strong um, purposes of, and one of the strong features of the entrepreneurial skills is creating value for others and volunteering and community work is starting to be a real feature of what we're doing as well. Okay, facilities. Hopefully you've had a bit of a chance to have a look around, but you've also, I'm sure, noticed you can't look at much of it because it's surrounded by fences. 
and that's what we're in the middle of that construction program. We have some wonderful facilities already, uh, and we're getting um, even more uh, in time for next year. So the building site you can see down the other end of the school will, when it's finished, will look like this. It will be a new um, front office, new library slash resource centre, classrooms, uh, and a range of other facilities. Um, new purpose built eight classroom block just over here, which will be focused on entrepreneurial learning. So a range of different styles of classroom, like a uh, the ability, which would have been lovely on a day like today, to have a, a shop front where you can be on, on undercover, serve food and those sorts of things. So uh, really exciting. Um, and as part of the overall uh, $20 million, as well as these two new buildings, uh, we're refurbishing upstairs in this building and upstairs of the other end of the school, so it'll be similar to the STEM Centre, which hopefully you have a look at inside, which is most of our displays that we're in tonight. So again, a lot of um, impact on the school in terms of the facility, um, but we also have already a range of other really uh, important facilities. So we're, we're going to be really well set up and, and ready to, to um, continue to do those exciting things to welcome a whole uh, lot of new students next year. So, uh, close to 400 students in one group here, which is quite good. Okay, one of the things, I'm going to finish by talking about what happens to our students once they leave the school. Uh, one of the things we're very proud of is that when students do finish their time at the school, um, they almost all students go off to something um, important, something positive. That might mean they go through and finish their SACE and go off to university to do something they want, and if they do, we've got a, a really good record of students getting into courses they want to get into. Not all students want to go to uni. A lot of students go down vocational pathways, um, some of them work in the trades. Um, they might want to start their own business, they might want to go in straight into the world of work, but we make sure that when students do leave, whether that, whatever that happens to be, we support them to go into a positive pathway. We've got a really good record of them doing that, and, and that's something that we're very proud of. Um, and hopefully we get a bit of enough fuel tonight for the range of opportunities that we can provide for students. We like to think that to most students they'll be able to find something um, to suit their interests level and their passions that they might have either existing or that they might develop in their time at the school. So I'm just going to pause there for a minute and invite um, Scott and Justin uh, to come up. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about some of the work that they've been doing with the school. Hey, a little social entrepreneurship uh, company that we created about five years ago, and then just uh, the collaboration that we've already had so far with Seton High School and the impact it's had on the students and also us as a company. So, me and Wesley started a uh, little company called Social Life about five years ago now, with the impact being the smallest impact on the environment, greatest impact on the community. So, I wanted to showcase five different elements where the community itself could either give an impact um, as small impact sustainably through either eat, farm, wear, field, or dream. So the mission um, was to show that we could create a movement together um, to create a more sustainable future. What so far we've been able to um, on the weekend partner up with the Food Future Group here at Seton High School. Um, we've got a catering company where we're in a, the fringe and why that this year. Um, this, uh, over the weekend we had about eight different students come into the WOMAT in the Fringe and they baked their own cakes and uh, brownies and they sold it through our catering company to raise money for the volunteers. Both days they sold out of the, the cakes and the brownies and they got a um, first hand experience for a, a catering company where we were doing about 700 to 800 covers a day through, <coughs> through Gluttony and through WOMAT. So one of the days, in one of the last days in Wyoming, we actually let the students overtake the whole, the whole site, and they were doing the serving, the front of house, the cleaning, 
Now you have to say the room challenges that you had in the last kitchen, or we just oversee and then build them through it. It was a great experience for us as a company, but also the students. And just to be able to show a lot of them after the four days, they were like, we really have a passion for the catering. So, you know, can we, is there any more opportunity that we could come and work with you guys? So we're going to run through, just personally, our own brand on how we, we've worked with this um, student entrepreneurial capability to define the opportunity, learning by doing and making it happen. And then how we can also help the students going forward to be able to work on these key aspects and how we can help through our different, uh, through our different opportunities to our company and how they could um, put this into practice. So we'll start off, we'll still start us off here. So a big part of our um, business, I suppose, especially in the early days, was our food side, which um, we incorporated a lot through our time here with Seton, with the kids at, at Seton. Um, hopefully a few of you guys were able, able to eat with us just outside. The students were in here this morning cooking all those meals for you guys to try. Um, it just gave them a bit of an idea of what it took really to get the food out um, in a situation like this. So, um, Part of our business really is um, we kind of want to change it up a little bit and really focus on what we can do um, as a part of our business is to give back to the wider community. So part of our way of thinking is um, you know we can still make money, but a part of that money we can obviously give back to the people that really need it the most. So over the past five years we've been able to donate you know over two and a half thousand meals. Um, back to the Hutt Street Centre, which is a big partnership that we've created probably over the last 10 years with us individually. Um, through their pathway system that they have, we're able to hire over 5,000 hours of homeless um, through our van and I think we do within our business, uh, which has been amazing. Um, our first full-time employee was through their pathway system, our chef, creating all our, our whole menu, which has been Amazing to see him develop over the last 12 months um, and pretty much get his life back on track, which has been amazing. Um, the second part of our, our business, which incorporates the food side, is our school based community garden program. So at the moment, we have three schools which um, are involved with this. This is our first one at Summer Primary School, which um, where we're from. Um, that's our property, which is in the background of our vineyard and our, our little van, which um, almost ended our business, but that's, a, that's another story. Um, so a part of that program is what we wanted to do with our business is um, it's easy just to go out there and find this amazing, amazing produce, but what we wanted to do is educate kids um, so they know where their food's coming from. Uh, part of our program is um, educating the kids, helping them grow the produce, um, and then in end buying it back off them. So it's a full ecosystem of the way they um, personally can run a business by themselves and make a little bit of money, but also obviously give back um, through our, our homes program. So that's, that's kind of, you know, one of our five big, big tip goals that we do. Um, another one is a small uh, clothing range that we've uh, produced. So we teamed up with Beyond Bank to get a little community grant to do an ethical clothing range where we donate, donate brand new um, pieces of clothing back to home shelters so they get the same opportunity and capability to have brand new clothing. Um, obviously being from the Brossa Valley, um, one, another one of our uh, items was the, the drink. So we wanted to create a um, sustainable minimal intervention wine company. So we turned our whole vineyard into organic practices and now we've been able to use the wine, uh, the wine company as a employment agency for that late homelessness. So We've been out there, all of our labels get hand labeled by people on the street, and all our labels get flanked by people on the street, or some of the best labels in South Australia, <laughs> making other partners. And the, so we had a five year goal to be um, work on this little venture called Forest Hill, which is a uh, little, building little sustainable communities. So um, it's using unutilised land, so car parks, where we get small cohorts of um, people on the street. So women's communities, youth communities, community groups, our pets. We get support network through Hutt Street Centre, employment opportunities through Forest Supply Co, through catering, 
to the construction, through the brief that I um, We were really working on people on the street, up the man's always got hierarchy and me. Back to self-actualization, so getting back into society. We were really trying to get the really kind of right next to drop in, making sure people had the same capability and opportunities that we have. It's been a massive part of our company to really sort of try to change the stereotype. So we, we sort of, we, our, one of our strategies is stories, not stereotypes. So listen to people's stories. So this is a little CAD project. We're about to launch the CAD project in about a month. So we're going to be able to build our first prototype and we're going to have a community partnership with Pace in Australia where we're going to have a prototype in there. So the goal for us is to have our first little mini village up and going within a year so we can showcase this in action. So the collaboration between Seton and Forage, obviously there's lots of elements in those five different areas that we'll be able to collaborate with. We're going to be able to show you the Food Futures one on the weekend and plus tonight and today was a great opportunity for the kids to see the whole process on how, how the food's made and then we gave them an opportunity to sell it themselves. So they're, bring, they're taking over tonight completely and built their menu from scratch with our chef and now they're being able to sell it. So if you haven't had a chance, you go out there and try the, um, try the great food that they've done and it's been just fantastic to see the opportunity with a school like this that's so, so involved in entrepreneurship and we've been able to just be able to showcase and give them a little bit of what we've learned over the last five years. So it's fantastic. There's a little video now that we'll be able to show you to um, so explain a little bit more. We're really excited to launch the 2021 Entrepreneurial Safe Packages with co-founder of Forage Supply Co, Scott Rogash. We've got 220 students really excited to engage in entrepreneurial education across a whole range of disciplines and we're really lucky to have a range of industry collaborators down here for the day. Today we're talking to all the kids and really um, knuckling down on um, different kids and different passions and what, what they want to get out of not only their life but what they want to um, look for the future and how they can help working with us and other social enterprises to create greater good for the community. I am working with Seton High School as an industry mentor, uh, talking about podcasting. Uh, it's all about trying to give uh, students an understanding of new media and new ways to tell stories. And we're working with Seton High School um, to support their, their sports and high performance program to introduce, um, I guess, people to what it is to be you know, an entrepreneur and to enter the industry and to try and bridge that gap between um, you know, what it is to study you know, sports science and, and those types of streams and then to be able to transition into industry. Probably the most exciting thing about this program that I'm excited about would be um, being able to express all my creative freedom. I think the thing that I am most excited about is having a platform to be able to share all my interests and everything that I love to learn more about. We'll be able to help and work with kids to sort of really find their purpose and passion and really be able to mentor them on what we've learned through our programs in the last five years with Pro Supply Co. This benefits uh, the school and the students by showing them that the ideas that they come up with have a lot of merit in that they can actually put them into action, uh, they can put them out in the community. What I hope to get out of the program is some way to express all my thoughts um, in an ethical manner. I think the thing I most want to get out of the program is a way to share my voice that's respectful to everyone that's going to be reading it or listening to it or seeing it. Entrepreneurship I think is is the future of, of the way that we work and rather than sort of going you know and rolling up to a job where we sort of clock in and clock out and, and then someone else's income it's about innovating and exploring our own sort of passion to find a real purpose in life having a program like this where you can have access to mentors and different people that have uh, in their entrepreneurial journey now would be such a such a positive for me personally but to be able to now be on the other end of it and help mentor kids to help them find their passion it's really exciting for us. As I'm sitting here, I feel pretty chill about everything. I'm not too stressed, so let's hope um, that continues forward throughout the year. But uh, I'm pretty excited to all of the I'm really pumped and really excited to see where this is going to go. And everything that's just like even through today, it sounds like it's going to be a really good opportunity. I'm really excited to be able to have that platform to have my voice to be heard, explore different interests. Since we're going, Tommy and the team out here have um, jumped on board and been so passionate about um, giving kids the opportunity to be able to 
guess, access some stuff inside and that would matter a lot. I think the insight from people like Scott from Foreign Supply Co. Uh, allow students to really connect with the entrepreneurial journey and start to connect with their own sense of what entrepreneurship is and their own development of entrepreneurial thinking and doing.